Welcome to Xamiga, a state-of-the-art technology for XML-based model-driven development and code generation. In this video, I'm going to show you the basic features of Xamiga.net Visual Studio plugin that will help you understand how Xamiga works so that you could start using it right away. After you install Xamiga.net, you will be able to create a new Visual Studio project for your Xamiga object model, which will have all your model files and generators that you can browse right in the Solution Explorer. So let's go ahead and create a new project. Let's pick the Xamiga object model project template and name it adventureworks.model. And we'll name the solution just adventureworks because it's going to have other projects in it. After clicking OK, we get a new Xamiga object model project that has a list of built-in generators as well as some predefined framework types and operators. Let's open up the XML file with the predefined framework types. As you can see, it defines a pretty basic set of initial logical types that extend from each other by using the base attribute. Inside each type definition, you can specify mappings to other physical types and entities such as SQL type, CLR type, and even the WPF control definition that is most appropriate for the given type. These mappings are extensible. and Each one is using the separate namespace, and typically a type inherits all mappings from its base types, unless it's specifically overridden in the current type. As you have noticed, when we initially opened this file, all types were collapsed to their definitions, which makes working with XML object models extremely convenient. This is a nice feature of Xamiga Editor. If you use the standard Visual Studio XML Editor instead, your file would be initially expanded like this, which would make working with it pretty hard. With Xamiga Editor, you can always select Collapse to Definitions and get and you'll get the initial view, and guess what? What gets collapsed is actually configurable. Let's create a new type called name that represents any name of up to 30 characters long. When we select the base type, Xamiga Editor suggests a list of existing types defined in the model and displays descriptions for each type so, you, so that you are more likely to pick the right type if you can actually keep your descriptions accurate and informative. Now, if you still make errors, Xamiga Editor underlines the errors as well as warnings and also reports them in the error list window. Okay, let's get down to business and create a couple of objects. You can select the Add New Item menu option and pick the Xamiga object as the item template. Let's name our object product and click add. The default template creates a type product for the object's key and the actual object with the key field of this type. Let's add another field called product name and use the type name that we defined before. Here, we just define our first barebone object. Let's add another object called order. We'll pick the new item, make it order. As before, the default template came with the key type and an object with the key field. Let's add two more fields, product and quantity. By using the type product, we implicitly established a relationship between the order object and the product object, since this type is used exclusively by the product's key. Now that we have two objects defined, we can go ahead and generate a database DDL script that will create the necessary tables for these two objects. 
let's select the database schema generator and set up the properties for the database to be SQL Server and to use the uppercase for database names and the generator is not going to be included in the build process so it needs to be run manually we can change the output path but we'll just use the default one let's run the generator the output window shows the progress as the generators run let's open up the generated script and review the generated DDL statements. The generated script is designed to be rerunnable, so it checks if the tables and other objects have already been created. As you can see, it creates the order table with the primary key, the product table with the primary key, and the foreign key relationship between the two tables. That's it. This concludes the introduction video to examiga.net. In the following videos, we're going to show you how to import your initial model from a database and then enhance it to be able to generate a business layer based on an entity data model, a WCF-based service layer, and a WPF or Silverlight presentation layers. This will give you enough information so that you could start using Exomega to build high-quality, multi-tier application fast. Thank you for watching.